Hi everyone, welcome to the video lecture where we're exploring three kinds of story structure from the point of view of a mythologist, a screenwriter, and a children's story writer. So, let's take a look, she. First, let's see. First, let's look at this little, uh, this little thing I showed last Tuesday. I think you'll find it kind of interesting. We're not gonna go over everything for the sake of time for this uh, video lecture. We're not gonna go over everything we, as interesting as it, as it is, we're not gonna go over everything that we talked about, uh, but, uh, on Tuesday, but suffice it to say, that there are four pillars of film. Let me just say this stuff really quick. There are four pillars of film. Anytime you talk about movies at all, you're talking about one of these four. Uh, the artistic, uh, that's any process of the, of the different art forms of filmmaking. The cultural, anything historical, anything historical on film. Uh, any way in which film relates to the sociopolitical aspects of current events or historical events. Um, and et cetera. I wish I could go more into this. For the sake of time, I can't. Financial. Anything that involves the business aspect uh, of, of movie making from box office to marketing to, uh, to really posters, any, anything relating to the financial ancillary markets it's all there last but not least is the technological just as it sounds any of the technical elements used to create a film from lenses and cameras to special effects and cgi it's all about technology baby remember this also um this also includes the um this also includes a makeup artist's brush yes Technological means any tool that any of the artists use with film. It's not just CGI and special effects, although that is a big part of it. It's also the camera, right? Because the camera is a technology to grab the picture. Um, so, let's see, this is from when I taught this class in um this is from when i taught this class at salt lake community college as a, uh, a a film class that i taught this was one of the this was the first lecture but let's talk about the basics uh the basics of this uh, we already did this gotta move on <laughs> okay so um First, the, the six types of conflict. Before we get to the three types of story structure, really quick, man versus self, usually independent films, it's very hard to film someone who's just thinking hard, uh, even if what they're thinking is very dramatic as far as life choices, etc. Man versus man. Yes, this is Rocky. Rocky is the more obvious thing, but it can be any, any film, any story, um, any story that has to do with uh, any conflict between two people. Yes, this includes uh, all romance films, romantic comedies or romantic dramas. This includes those too because it's person versus person, right? Person versus society, Norma Ray, Aaron Brockovich, uh, any, anyone in prison, that's person versus society. Person versus nature, Twister or Jaws, person versus supernature, nature, uh, we call it, sometimes we call it the supernatural. The official word is supernature. That's the noun. For some reason, we use the, the adjective as the noun, the supernatural. But officially, it is uh, supernature. Uh, ghost, any ghost movie, any extraterrestrial, any alien movie. And you can say that the first Jaws is a, a, a person versus supernature movie because, let's face it, uh, you know, how many, how many sharks act like that? 
act like a monster in a movie. Not very many. Last but not least, of course, is Man vs. Technology, from Wally to Terminator uh, to iRobot. Yep, these are these kinds of stories. And again, I'm referencing mostly films, but this, in, this includes all, all stories. Um, let's skip that. Mainstream elements, independent elements. Uh, you can go back and read this and just freeze the picture if you're interested. Uh, mainstream elements are these. Independent elements, uh, independent films are these. Three ways to look at mainstream film structure. Here is our, here's what we're really focusing on. And I've already burned up two minutes. Okay, so <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep going. So with screenwriting, you have the rising action. Okay, uh, you have, uh, with screenwriting, you have uh, three, three different sections, three different parts to a story. If you count the midpoint crisis here, that you could say four, because the first one, act one, is everything, the rising action, the thing that tells us maybe something's kind of off. Uh, it, it lets us know the ordinary world that's going on. And then the inciting incident plunges us into act two. The inciting incident is the thing we came to see the movie for. It's the big problem that happens. It sends us into uh, the big problem that needs to be fixed, the inciting incident. Uh, and the reason why I started the whole thing with dominoes is because, again, it's cause and effect. It's one falls, the other one falls. Plot and character, cause and effect. Midpoint crisis. Um, so, for instance, the inciting incident in Harry Potter would be when Hagrid shows up and tells this poor forlorn orphan boy who's, uh, whose aunt and uncle treat him like dirt, uh, when Hagrid shows up and tells him he's a wizard. That is the, uh, that's the thing. And so that's the inciting incident. In incite means to start. That plunges us into chapter, into chapter two. Yeah, that too, right? Um, plunges us, uh, but this, were, this, is, this is for novels too. It plunges us into act two. Uh, there's cause and effect. And then midpoint crisis happens. That sends us into, okay, now it's really serious. What's going to happen now? And then the second act, uh, or the third if you count midpoint crisis as its own act, which some people do. Then um, the second act, um, for Harry Potter, what is the midpoint crisis for the first for the first Star Wars, episode four, they've been, the midpoint crisis is the trash compactor scene. Where they're, trying, they're trying to get away from the, uh, they're trying to get away from the stormtroopers and they jump into the garbage chute and it starts closing in on them. And then they finally are able to get it stopped. <laughs> um, and then of course the second act or end, endling, oh my goodness. That's a typo I haven't, I haven't noticed. Uh, the ending, not, not endling, second act uh, ending, or the film climax, or the denouement, or the coda, act three, or the fourth act, the final act. Um, that's when we go back to the, the regular world, right? Now, if we look at the way that a mythologist uh, looks at this, then, uh, there was a guy named Joseph Campbell. And in the mid-1950s, uh, this guy <clears throat> studied every single story told across time, across cultures, all over the world. And he, he looked at the similarities of all of them. And he wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And it's very fascinating, the more you, the deeper you go into this, how humans tell stories uh, that don't know each other, right? It seems that humans are hardwired to tell these stories this way. And, and stories definitely change, they switch. Uh, they get stretched and pulled depending on time uh, that they are made, depending on cultural specifics, but overall, here is the mythological way of looking at story structure. First, we start in the, again, first act, right? Notice how, notice how similar these are. 
first act, you have the ordinary world. Nothing's going on yet, right? Um, you have a person that's called to adventure. Oftentimes they say no to this call. Look at episode four of Star Wars. You have Luke Skywalker saying, I don't want to go to Alderaan. Look, it's not like I like the Empire. I hate it, but there's nothing I can do right now. I got work to do. Um, I've seen it a few times. Anyway, he, oftentimes there is a refusal. And then, of course, he goes home with Ben Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and then he sees that his, his, his aunt and uncle have been killed. And then he realizes there's nothing for him. Now I want to learn to be a Jedi. I, need to, I want to go. So he accepts the call. He goes to the threshold. The threshold is when they meet for the very first time. They meet uh, Han Solo. That's the threshold. Uh, the, the cantina scene, you know, in, in Star Wars, if you haven't seen it, you know, you have these alien looking guys playing. Anyway, very interesting. Um, and then the initiation and transformation. Notice initiation is very close to inciting incident. This is exactly it. This is why I, it's bolded. We jump into, into Act 2. This, again, this is the reason why we come to see the story. The reason why we're reading it. The reason why we're watching it. Initiation and transformation. You have challenges, the abyss, uh, transformation, or, the, or, or it's, not, it's not listed here, but what's called the apotheosis. That's like the midpoint crisis, the apotheosis. The apotheosis, much like, and, and the, the midpoint crisis, often is the thing that turns, well, not always, but it's often the thing that turns the hero from a lower H, lowercase H hero, into a capital letter H hero uh but but something that uh that joseph campbell said a lot is that this whole second part going into the extraordinary world um from the initiation and transformation uh he often said that the initiation and transformation is basically a um it's it's that, that this whole part during the the uh during the extraordinary world is filled with tests and revelations. The hero is tested. The hero is given lots of aha moments, like revelations, like, oh, wow. So the hero is learning. Uh, this is a big reason why I believe that um, Harry Potter mostly is set at Hogwarts. Most of the st those stories are set in a place of learning. Uh, it's, it's just that the learning... There's a lot of different types of learning that can happen, not just curricular, right? Not just what's going on in their classes, right? Harry learns a lot about a lot outside of his classes. Um, same thing with life, right? Uh, this is what the hero's journey was kind of all about. Um, then there's the atonement. I also mentioned that uh, the, the mythological journey, the hero's journey, is also um, very similar to Christ's story. There's a specific interesting thing happening about, uh, about the hero's birth, right? Um, there are tests and revelations all the way through. And then there's a return with a gift. And of course, Christians believe that that gift is, um, is salvation for all mankind and, and uh, conquering death. So last but not least, we get to the way I, a children's story the way that a children's story is, is done. And notice, notice the similarities, right? Uh, once upon a time, uh, they tell the basics, person, place, right? Every day they talk about the ordinary world, right? Until one day, until one day, this happened, inciting incident. The initiation, we jump into the extraordinary world. We jump into the second act. Right? Because of that, because of that, because of that, midpoint crisis, because of that, because of that, because of that, um, until finally, end of the second act or end of the third, we, we return, we, we return to the ordinary world with a gift. And ever since then, and there's the moral to the story. Uh, it's very, you know, anytime we get stuck in storytelling, sometimes it's good to go right back to this. Anyway, I hope you guys like this, this lecture. I try to keep it short. Thanks so much. And I will see you later. Thanks so much.